Hi, I'm Ken Oaks with Oaks Daylilies. It's uh, the end of October, and I thought I would just talk a minute about what daylilies look like at this time of year, and then talk a little bit about uh, what to do with your daylilies as you move into the uh, winter season. So um, if you look around here at the foliage behind me, you can tell that we've already had some cold weather here in Tennessee. We had a few nights uh, in the upper 20s last week, and uh, it's uh, taken its toll on the foliage a little bit. You can tell more so on some. This actually looks still pretty decent and green, and this has got some more yellow and brown. So if you're new to daylilies and your daylilies start doing this in the winter, that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, daylilies are uh, hardy perennials, and uh, they will come back year after year. But in the winter, this is what happens to the foliage. So uh, daylilies vary in the kind of foliage that they have from uh, dormant daylilies, which like to go completely dormant in the winter. There will be no green showing on them all the way up to evergreen daylilies, which like to keep growing all through the winter if possible. Now we're here in Tennessee and uh, anywhere pretty much zone eight or seven and colder. Uh, in the winter, the cold weather is going to uh, get your daylily foliage. It's going to nip it back anyway. So uh, for you folks, it really doesn't matter which one you get. Uh, but you'll notice on your daylilies that the dormants are going to be completely gone and the evergreens are still going to have some green foliage sticking up to the top. Now you folks down in the in the deep south, zones 9 and 10, where you really don't get much of a, of a cold weather, weather in the winter, um, you, you're probably going to want to stick with the uh, varieties that are listed as evergreens or semi-evergreens, which are kind of in the middle, uh, because those like to keep growing uh, and the dormant varieties like to go dormant and they won't have that opportunity uh, in your area. So we get asked quite often about what to do in the winter uh, with the uh, daylily foliage. Uh, the short answer is you don't have to do anything. Uh, you can just leave it and there's some benefits to that. You know, the dead foliage will act as an insulator to the plant. But if you want to pull it off, you certainly can. Uh, this plant here, you know, starting to go dormant. It's, it's still early, not quite winter yet. Uh, and as this one moves on into the winter, this will go completely brown. And then you'll just be able to pretty much just pull the foliage off. It'll all come off pretty easy uh, after it all goes dormant. Uh, some of the more evergreen varieties will never go completely brown and you would have to trim those off. And you certainly can do that as well if you want to. But really it's just for cosmetics. It doesn't do uh, any good or harm to the plant either way. So I wanted to talk about uh, trimming the daylily foliage. So we trimmed all of this foliage here in our display garden back in August. Uh, we did that just because, um, well, frankly, we had some weeds in the garden. Uh, and also, uh, you know, some of the leftover stakes were unsightly. It was just kind of looked a little unkempt. So we came through with a weed eater, pretty much, and we needed all of the beds about, you know, yay tall, six, eight inches or so. Uh, and I like how it, the foliage comes back, these nice clumps of uh, mounded foliage. Uh, and so, you know, as you look forward to next summer, that's something you can keep in mind to do in your beds um, if, you know, they look uh, un you know, unsightly after the end of the season. Sometimes they look just fine. You don't have to do anything to them. But if, if you need to, feel free to trim them back and they will come back with nice foliage like this. So a question we get, you know, pretty regularly uh, relates to our daylilies bulbs uh, or not. And there's some confusion on that, and rightly so. The word lily is in there and there are lily bulbs. But daylilies are plants, not bulbs. They have roots attached to the green leaves and so there's not a bulb down there, it's actually uh, roots. And so uh, daylilies need to be planted uh, while your season is warm, uh, unlike a bulb, which you would plant in the fall. Typically, you'll want to plant daylilies at least two to four weeks before your uh, first hard freeze in your area. Uh, and if you're not sure when that is, we put a link down in the comments to uh, a map that you can look and see when that is. So here in our area in Tennessee, and you'll be wrapping up uh, a couple weeks ago probably, although you can push the envelope a little bit if you will mulch your plants, uh, give them some extra winter protection. Uh, part of the problem is not necessarily that your plants are going to freeze, although that's certainly a possibility if you plant them too late, but uh, if they don't get established into the ground, you know, we can have freeze-thaw cycles here in our area that are very common in the spring, and you'll go out and you'll see your plant actually heaved up out of the ground in which case it sits on top of the ground and freezes and dries out both. So in any case, uh, you'll want to stop planting at least a few weeks before your first hard freeze or frost. So if you're new to daylilies, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of background about the plant. Uh, daylilies are uh, very easy to grow plants. They're hardy perennials, which means they come back year after year. 
Um, they uh, grow, they're not bulbs, they're actually plants. They grow from roots attached to uh, green leaves. Um, there are different varieties of foliage types on daylilies. Um, they range from uh, dormant varieties, which like to go dormant in the winter, the foliage dies completely to the ground, to evergreen varieties, which try to grow as long as it's warm. Uh, keep in mind, if you're in an area that gets uh, cold winters, um, your foliage is going to get bit back or frozen back anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. You can grow any of the varieties. Uh, if, if you're in an area that does not get a cold period in the winter, you're probably going to want to stick with the evergreens or semi-evergreens just because the dormants like to have the opportunity to go dormant. If they don't get it, they'll decline over time. Uh, Dahlias, like I mentioned, are very easy to grow. They don't have a lot of requirements. The best thing you can do for them is plenty of water. Um, they will sit through a drought and not die, which is nice, but they certainly won't perform as well. If you can give them a lot of water, particularly, uh, you know, approximately an inch a week or more, uh, you'll definitely get more blooms, bigger blooms. They'll just look better all around. Um, as far as uh, cultural requirements, uh, they're adaptable to a wide range of soils. You know, if you have a particularly heavy soil, and I'm going to add some organic material, or a particularly sandy soil, the same thing applies. Um, they would like a little fertilizer each spring. Uh, just a balanced fertilizer is appropriate, although they do like uh, extra nitrogen. So sometimes we'll go back in and add a little uh, extra nitrogen on top after we do our balanced application. We do offer a, a specific uh, fertilizer product for daylilies. There's a link below if you're interested in that. One of the best things about daylilies is just the uh, huge range of varieties and available. Uh, pretty much every color except blue. There's no blue daylily, but pretty much everything else. Uh, and then there are blooms that are as small as uh, just an inch across, all the way up to uh, an honest foot across. And then all sorts of different shapes of blooms, uh, your standard sort of round bloom, and then there's ones with long thin petals, like the legs of a spider. And then there's ones that have double blooms called double daylilies, kind of like a peony. And so uh, there's uh, different colors and shapes and sizes. They really lend themselves to uh, you know, collecting and they'll, there's something to match, you know, whatever your color scheme in your garden is. So uh, that's one of the best things about daylilies. Our, our business started as a hobby. My uh, father and grandfather both enjoyed growing all sorts of types of plants and they started growing a few daylilies back in the sixties. Uh, they did really well. And then they liked this one and they don't have that color and they don't have that color. Next thing you know, the front yard's full. And so we started selling a few out of the garden and uh, here, uh, what, 60 years later almost? That's crazy to think that. Uh, we're still selling daylilies. And so uh, we've been really pleased and, and have gotten a lot of joy out of daylilies over all these years. And so I think we've got something that, uh, that you would enjoy and we'd, we'd love to share it with you.